Have you ever heard of a game called Toho? Toho is a Japanese bullet hell video game where you dodge a lot of bullets while listening to some awesome music. And no, Toho is not an anime. Although there's a cool fan anime that you can watch on YouTube, it's a Japanese bullet hell video game, like I said. Been around since the late 1990s, Toho is created by Team Shanghai Alice, or just one guy named Zun, who likes to drink beer. Because of Toho's popularity, Toho has created a huge fan base even outside of Japan, and Zun lets them go fucking wild with a lot of fan works, unlike a certain company, such as creating fan games, remixes, fan animations, memes, and if you're a TF2 fan like me, you might recognize the month first series like October 1st. Or you might have encountered Toho bosses in Freak Fortress 2, which, funny enough, it's how I first heard of Toho. The game is also popular enough for people like Moist Critical to play it, Serpello, Parashock X, and even Toby Fox himself, which inspired him to create this internet masterpiece known as Undertale. I've seen people play Toho, listen to some awesome music, and I wanted to play Toho myself, so I did. Right after finishing up that Pixel Gun 3D video, I finally got the chance to experience what's it like to play Toho for the very first time. And let me just say, this game is goddamn beautiful. There are a lot of things I want to say about Toho. From the gameplay, the art, to the fucking music. How is this game beautifully designed, one may ask. As an amateur game design student myself, I want to test my knowledge to explain what is it I love about Toho and how the game is beautifully designed, based on my experience playing Toho, of course. And I'm only going to be showcasing three of the Toho games, Toho 6, Toho 7, and Toho 8. If you're new to the channel, it would be cool if you could subscribe to my channel with bell notifications on, you know, stuff that other YouTubers would say to get people to subscribe. So anyways, let me introduce you to the plot of Toho. You're in the world of Gensokyo, where humans and other beings from different types of mythology exist, with two main protagonists of the series, Reimu Hakure, the Shrine Maiden, and Marisa Kirisame, the Human Magician. Reimu is mostly tasked with resolving incidents caused around Gensokyo, whether it be clearing up the Red Mist, stopping winter, or finding the real moon. While Marisa does that too, I guess. Toho also has a huge cast of iconic characters, and that is the only piece of lore you get in this video, because although the lore may be fascinating, I'm only going to be covering the game design aspect of Toho. So if you want to learn more about the lore, I recommend this video from a small YouTuber, Suwabako. Before you start playing Toho, you have to pick which difficulty you want to start off with. You can play on normal mode, hard mode, or be a fucking lunatic. And I'm not going to showcase easy mode because easy mode is for pussies. Next, you choose one of two playable characters, Reimu and Marisa. In Toho 7, there's Sakia Izayo as the third character, and in Toho 8, there are four tag teams of two playable characters. I'm not sure what's it like in Toho 9 onwards, because I've never played them. But what I know for sure is that each of these playable characters offer something unique in terms of playstyle. Now for the actual gameplay. The game has six stages, and each stage involves shooting down your enemies while dodging and collecting pickup items to score points and grow more powerful. Then you fight the mid boss, and then an actual boss at the end of the stage. Your objective is to beat 6 stages, and when you start playing the game, do you notice anything? That's right, there is no tutorial on how to play the game, which is perfect in my opinion, because you only need to press a few buttons. You can see how the first stage starts off slow, giving you time to figure out how the game mechanics work. Each stage becomes progressively difficult as you learn more about the game, and Toho lets you run before you can walk, or in this case, you run before you can fly, because Reimu and Marisa can fly, you get what I mean. If there are too many bullets headed in your way, then you can shift to focus mode to move slower, making it easier to dodge precisely and aim your shots accurately. You can even see your hitbox, in Toho 7 onwards at least. You also have these bombs that you can use to clear any path and deal some damage. You can track how many lives and bombs you have. Once you run out of bombs, you're just gonna have to learn how to dodge until you lose a life, to which your bombs replenish. 
once you run out of lives, however, you have the option to continue, so you can keep playing as long as you can, which sounds great and all, until the game punishes you with a bad ending. Notice how for every bad ending you get, the game tells you to beat Toho without using any continues, because if you beat Toho without using any continues, not only you'll be rewarded with a good ending, but you will also be rewarded by unlocking an extra stage, and in it, you'll get to fight the secret boss, which is a lot harder and longer than your average normal bosses. I know you may be asking, how does one unlock an extra stage without using any continues? If you score enough points or defeat a certain enemy, the game rewards you with extra bombs and lives. The great thing about these bombs is that it teaches you how to be resourceful in order to progress through the game. So an optimal strategy I've discovered while playing Toho is to save your bombs until you encounter a bullet pattern you know you can't dodge. And again, if you run out of bombs, you're just gonna have to learn how to dodge. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you have the grace counter, which counts how many bullets to have passed through your hitbox without getting hit. It's supposed to be a risk reward type of thing, where if you grace through a certain amount of bullets, you'll get a score bonus added to your overall score. That's pretty much all it does. I personally don't think it's that important if you want to enjoy playing Toho. As I'm making of this video, there are over 18 main Toho games, with Toho 19 coming out this year. Since Toho as a series is over 27 years old, how does Zunt keep the players engaged? Well, we know that the replayability is not infinite since you go through the same dialogue over and over again, but you can still try out other playable characters to get a feel of what their playstyle is like, and you can even challenge yourself by being a fucking lunatic and earning a high score. But that's not all that keeps Toho players engaged. Zun added new bosses, new mechanics, and new soundtracks to keep the series fresh for new players while drinking beer. Speaking of bosses, there's something about these boss fights that feels special. Even during non-boss fights, the game never gets boring as they constantly throw bullets at you, keeping you busy until you defeat them. And they don't just randomly throw bullets at you, these bullets have patterns. Depending on their HP, you can see the name of their spell cards appear on the screen. It's like their own special attack where they create different types of bullet patterns that can be very overwhelming. Some are easy to read, some are tricky but satisfying to learn, and some are really impossible. Like Remilia Scarlet, some of her bullet patterns are just her shooting straight at you without warning. Then again, dodging these bullets take a lot of skill, and depending on your position, they also give you a clear view on where you need to dodge. Like Raisin, her bullets may come at you fast at first, but if you play Toho long enough, you'll realize that her attack patterns are easier to read once they slow down. Though I always pay attention to the bullets around me, which is why Zun added the enemy indicator in Toho 7 onwards to make it easier to focus on dodging while aiming at the same time. While drinking beer, regardless of that, Toho is still fucking hard, even for people who have never played any bullet hell video games. But at the same time, these bullet patterns are pretty to look at. It's not that they create these patterns for the sake of being challenging. These patterns also represent the type of characters bosses are. Take a look at this bullet pattern from the Prison River Sisters. Their bullet patterns are like watching a concert, especially how the musical notes turn into bullets. Take a look at this bullet pattern from Hong Mi Lee. Notice how this one is shaped like a flower. Sure, there are only two colors, but damn, they look so goddamn pretty. And take a look at this bullet pattern from Sagia Isuyoi. Her time stopping bullet pattern reminds me of Dio. I would cover the secret bosses, but they are way too long and hard to complete, so I plan on making a separate video about that, so keep that in mind for future uploads. Besides, do you have any fucking idea how frustrating it was trying to unlock the extra stage? I was struggling to survive and forced myself to learn with so much trial and error. I mean, it's not surprising considering that it's called bullet hell, since it has the word hell in it. And that's not all that makes the boss fight special. The stage environment also represents the type of characters the bosses are. Like in stage 2, the setting takes place in a misty lake and Eternal fits well with the stage environment, especially since she is an ice fairy and most of her bullet patterns are colored blue with some shaped like ice shards. And in stage 4, the setting takes place in a library, which fits well with patchouli knowledge, since books contain knowledge. I mean, it's literally in her name. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that Tao is made by one guy, which is true. 
Not only if Zun works on the art, but he also does all the coding, level design, and music all by himself while drinking beer. What's mind blowing to me is that Zun taught himself how to do all of that, and that is fucking incredible. Although he has collaborated with other projects such as the fighting games, he stated that he works 6 times more comfortably alone because he hates managing other workers. But how does Zun make his levels? Well first, he makes the music, then he comes up with the characters and levels that are based on the music, then he determines the difficulty of the stage. In Zun's words, the video game industry has become too easy and less complex when appealing to a wider audience, which explains why all the Toho games are very challenging. Although Zun's art isn't perfect by any means, he makes up for it with the colors he chooses. Take a look at all of the Toho characters. The colors Zun chose for all of his characters are well thought out, and it makes all the characters iconic. Despite improving his art over the years, his fans do a better job interpreting the characters. Take a look at Memories of Phantasm. I personally like this interpretation of the Toho characters way better in my opinion. His number one priority when making his games is finding the perfect balance between quality and invested time performance while drinking beer. Because for him, that kind of balance is what makes Toho one of the best games there is. Oh, and I bet you're wondering one thing though. Why are all the characters female? As Zun stated in the Q&A panel, Toho is meant to be beautiful and aesthetically pleasing, so having boys would ruin the beauty and balance of Toho. With that being said, I think it's time to talk about the best part of the game, the music. Music is one of the most important things when making a game. If anyone asks me what video game music I enjoy listening to, the answer is fucking Toho music. Toho music is hella late. I'm no expert in music theory or anything, but holy shit. Toho has the best music of all time, especially the remixes. Whenever I'm in a boss fight, the music makes the fight exciting and you can feel the atmosphere around the stage environment. In fact, the music makes every fight feel legendary. Not to mention that it's harder to get mad at the game because whenever I lose, I just don't feel like rage quitting because all I can think about is how fucking awesome the music is. The melody makes all of the Toho music memorable, not only because it's awesome, but because the music also syncs in with both the enemies and the bosses very perfectly. So you know what bullet patterns to expect. The music also conveys so many emotions and you can feel so much from all of the Toho characters, like Cherno. I've already mentioned her before, but something I would like to add is that her music conveys this icy feeling, since again, she is an ice fairy. You can go into the music room and read about the process of how Zun makes his music. If you read into Zun's background, you'll know that Zun originally wanted to be a game composer, so he decided to make Toho so that he has an excuse to make his music. While drinking beer, why is this guy obsessed with beer so much? Just listen to these songs for me, would ya? The way Zun uses the trumpet, or what the Toho community likes to call the Zun Pets, truly incredible. If you can't find a way to play Toho, or don't feel like playing Toho at all, the least you can do is listen to the music. I know a friend from college who is a huge Toho fan, yet he has never played a single game of Toho. Seriously, just listen to the music, it's fucking amazing. To end off this video, it's crazy how Toho is still going strong, even though it's not well known outside of Japan, yet in the online world, people know of Toho for the memes, the music, and other things. The fact that Zun was able to make all of the Toho games all by himself is truly remarkable. For those who want to get into Toho, I hear Toho 10 is a great start which you can get on Steam. I really had a fun time playing Toho, 
And if you don't feel like playing Toho, then that's fine. You can still go listen to the music. I'm not sure what the future holds for Toho, but I know for sure that Toho will still be goddamn beautiful. Also, I form an addiction listening to Toho music. Please help me.